Hey guys, in this video I'm just going to elaborate on um, something I touched on when I did the K2 review video when I talked about multicolour filaments and how I UV printed onto um, an object that I printed. Someone asked me to detail what I was talking about a little bit more so in this video I'll detail that. So this here is what you call a UV direct object printer and what that means is that it uses UV reactive inks and it um, lays that down onto an object and it uses a UV light to cure that ink to make it dry or hard. Um, you can get UV direct to film printers which take a roll of film through them. With those you can't print on the objects because they're set up with a roller for just film. So with my wife's hobby um, and what she does, she does um, cricket stuff and she uh, does t-shirts and stuff like that so this printer is mainly for her type of hobby that's what we got it for and this allows you to print any colour you want onto pretty much any object probably not silicon but pretty much any object it allows you to print onto round objects like cylinders and stuff uh, with attachments um, you can print onto cups mugs stuff like that with more attachments and you can even print onto things like pens and that by laying in um, something just basically hold it so it doesn't roll over so you can pretty much print onto any type of object that you want so when I mentioned about printing onto 3d printed objects um, you can build uh, light box signs um, Basically, if you've got something and you don't want to try and use multicolored filaments or it'll take too long, uh, you can use this type of printer to print onto that um, object. So in this video I'm just going to do as an example to show you how all of this works. Is um, This was uh, RPM gauge housing that I designed for a client. He had a, um, a 16,000 RPM gauge that needed to go in here. He didn't have uh, housing for it so um, I designed and built this one for him and I printed it out on the Creality K2 and um, it was printed in ASA this is just the mock-up one that I, I designed to show him to um, get approval to go you know through with ASA so this is just PLA but it doesn't matter the material the object will be the same so in this video what we're going to do is we're just going to do what I did and we're going to print the um, the definitions for what cables go onto here so it would just be positive data negative. Uh, I should also mention that when I was building this I laser cut um, Perspex lenses to go in here and I can basically say that the K2 prints fairly dimensionally accurate because uh, this here is 93 millimeters and I cut the lenses at 92.5 millimeters and they fit in very nicely so um and this was on both pla and asa so the k2 prints fairly dimensionally accurate because um, my laser is very accurate so um, being able to do those two different parts and put them together and have no issues with it binding up um, just says that the k2 is fairly good for getting uh, measurements right especially when you're building stuff like this that's to go into a race car and it needs to fit specific dimensions and have specific holes in specific spots. But anyway, we'll get on to what we actually do to print onto this. So now this printer has a vacuum bed and all that means is it'll, it'll suck um, whatever object you've got to the bed. Um, and to protect that obviously, um, I put a cover over this as I'm doing it. So what I do is I just laser cut um, plywood pieces these are cheap, um, I can cut them to the shape, size of the bed and um, you can print onto them, uh, you can do colour test tags so um, it's very easy to you know kind of just use this as waste material so basically this will go onto the bed and then we'll tape it down just so it doesn't move Alright, now the reason we do this is because the bed slides backwards and forwards. Think of this as like an inkjet printer that prints onto paper. So this moves the bed, so you don't want your piece that you've put onto it moving. Because what we do to line this dimension up with this dimension where it's going to print, 
is I uh, take a slice of this and then I transfer that as lines so I get the outline and I put that I print that onto here and then that way I can line this up so I know exactly where the head's going to print so that's one of the difficult things with uh, UV printing is getting this dimensionally accurate here okay now we're getting ready to print the first template so um basically the bed's ready and um, I'll send the file to the printer alright so there we have it you should be able to just see it on the camera but basically what we've done is we've printed an outline of this onto this and what this does is this allows me to line it up so now I know where it's going to sit. Just a matter of lining it up, getting it as close as possible. There's probably better ways of doing this but this is just how I do it. And there we have it. So now this is in the spot that the, um, the software is going to print on. So now when it goes to print it should print in the correct spot in the back of this. going to lower it here. It has an automatic lowering mechanism. But I basically just caused it to lower it so it didn't spare screwing around. And there's a sensor which tells it where to go. And there we go. So that's the end result. See if we can get it to view on the camera. So it's actually not blurry. And um, yeah, so that's that's UV printed on there. It's dry. You can touch it, and it's fairly um like you can scratch on this, and it's not going to come off. So um, of course, one would say, well, you've got a multicolor filament printer. Why not just use multicolor filaments? Um, well, if you're printing in ASA, um, for me, why buy three different, four different spools of ASA, uh, which is black, red, green, um, when I can just do this. This serves the same purpose, and um, it's quicker, and if you've got the tools, use them. So, um, this is UV printing anyway, this is how you kind of do it. And um, yes, it's not obviously not a replacement for multicolor printing because, of course, you're not doing eyeballs in um, in little creatures or whatnot. Um, figurines, that's the word I'm looking for. You're not doing colors and stuff like that. This is more towards manufacturing parts for people. So with this, um, I gave this to the client. He's, it's in his race car. He's got his RPM gauge in here with the window. It's all good, it's got the light in there, the back light, so everything works good for him. And then um, on the back, he knows where to connect the wires, so um, it served its purpose, and I didn't need any more than just the one ASA filament. So anyway, that's UV printing um, combined with 3D printing, and of course, laser cutting for the lenses and stuff. So um, it all kind of works together. When you've got lasers, you've got um, UV printers, you've got 3D printers. It allows you to make parts that are just not obtainable. And that's kind of something that I do here. So um, I thought I'd make the video and elaborate on it. And I hope that gives a little bit of information to, um, you know, someone that was asking. Now, um... These types of printers, uh, this one particularly, I got from Alibaba. Uh, they're not easy to kind of import. Um, you might find local suppliers, but really you're looking at somewhere from China. So I got this from Alibaba, and it was about three and a half thousand dollars. And then with the Australian import duties and all of that garbage. It ended up being about uh, 3,900 and something to actually get to my door. 
because uh, whenever something comes into Australia and it's over a thousand dollars you've got to pay uh, duty on it so they hit you when it comes into the country so um, this is a great little machine there's obviously better ones out there I have another machine that works really well but this is the one I use mostly because it's got the the bed that um, goes up and down and it's got the vacuum and um, it's also got varnish as well so if you wanted to make this shiny um, and give it a, like a clear coat like what you get on paint um, it's also got varnish so you can put another layer over this and it'll be nice and shiny and that gives it even more protection but for 3d printed stuff you don't need it like this doesn't come off you know what I mean like I can scratch it it's not going to come off you know you can see it doesn't come off so um, that's all I needed for this anyway so I hope that cleared up some stuff with um, UV printing from my other video on that and um, this may be something that you want to look into um, maybe not but this is what it is anyway so I hope that kind of explains it all